that you would, or gifts that you would like to give, get everyone that have not made it to that basket, please have to find a way. I wish we had a little pedestal. I'm out. Have a seat. <laughs> that sounds awful. It does sound awful. Especially because Al asked if I had my phone in a plastic bag so it wouldn't get wet. <laughs> you can stand if you'd like. You do not. All right. Have to All right. And it'd be better for everyone to see you. Yeah, for sure. So, so maybe two, three months ago, one of the session members. You all would not probably believe how devious some of your session members have been. I was surprised. And I'm one who is devious. But uh, we had an idea, they had an idea to uh, acknowledge Evan for his four years of leadership and inspiration and we thank you so much. I think I can probably speak for most of us when we leave here on Sunday, we are inspired, and I can only speak for myself. I wish it lasts longer than it did throughout the week, but I'm trying. <laughs> so uh, we thank you for your words of inspiration every week. We know how much effort you put into it. So we have gone to a lot of effort ourselves. So I'm going to follow a script. <laughs> uh, today we are here to express our appreciation to our pastor, Evan. After serious thought and much deliberation, Session has come up with some appropriate gifts we would like to present Evan. <laughs> given his past behavioral, or given past behavioral observations, not only do we want to do this, we feel we need to do this. <laughs> we hope that he will take these, accept these items in the spirit in which they are given. <laughs> You all are genius. You don't even know. <laughs> we will begin. We begin when Evan had found new love of gardening, mm. or especially tomato growing. <laughs> we really appreciate his interest in hands-on, hands-dirty raising crops. The back to the land attitude. Some questions. Did Evan have a clue about what he was getting into? Uh, I knew things would grow. <laughs> had he read any profiles by notable growers? Not a one, no. Did he know any histi historical tomato lore? No. no. Had he attended any seminars on growing tomatoes? No. No. <laughs> Had he journeyed to any regional tomato festivals? No. <laughs> Did he know anything about selecting or growing great tasting tomatoes? Mm. No. no. <laughs> you answered correct. <laughs> like, I don't know if you folks remember, but there's one particular fruit that I don't like to eat raw. And that's tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Cook them a little bit and they're great, but raw? Yeah. So here he is in Fulton County, <laughs> surrounded by master gardeners and county agents, all very knowledgeable on the subject. <laughs> and who can forget the bounty of tomatoes from the gazillion plants he stuck in his backyard at the man? <laughs> in retrospect, we think he could have used more helpful information. We beg forgiveness for our lack of assistance in providing you that help. We want to rectify that. <laughs> Here are some handy references. Just in case your electronics fail you, we have a tomato study book titled The Too Many Tomatoes Cookbook. T-O-O, -O, Too Many. And the Tomato Festival, a practical guide for growing, cooking, and appreciating tomatoes. We appreciate it. I know. I planted 35 tomato plants that first year. 
<laughs> and so that produced a few, and I did bring a few by. And we appreciate them. Thank you. We'll save you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we know how fascinated you have become with your new video camera. Which Wes is modeling in the corner. <laughs> we see that tripod every Sunday morning in the little vestibule. There it is, just waiting for the inevitable. Someone to knock it over. <laughs> just last week, Richard Wrights kicked it while going by. Sorry to brat you out, Richard. He's already left. Good deal. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Richard suggested because of the possibility of an accident, it might be best if we had a backup tripod. So, Coming out is your <laughs> custom made backup tripod. The Presbyterian seal. Yeah. <laughs> the appropriate footwear. <laughs> If you want the camera to stay on top, you're going to have to tie it on. <laughs> All yours, Evan. Well, thank you. <laughs> Wes, do you look forward to using that? Yeah. <laughs> right. I, don't think, I don't think we need to go any farther. You can't, <laughs> you can't top that. <laughs> Now one of the best ones. This will go down in folklore of Fulton County. <laughs> Let's talk about the event that happened a while back. You were first becoming interested in photography. Mm -hmm. You bought a very nice camera. You were the picture-taking guy. Mm -hmm. You were so proud of your photos, and rightly so. There was the one night, a beautiful night, when the snow laid on the ground. <laughs> covered in that beautiful white stuff. At this point, we must turn the story over to Kenny Walker <laughs> to collaborate the events of the evening. <laughs> I might be a little fuzzy on some details, so you feel free to tell me. <laughs> so it was a cold winter night the snow was on the ground, and it was getting late. Must have been, what, a, Almost midnight. getting close to midnight. Yeah. Yeah. So like most normal people, I was at home in the warmth, getting ready for bed. When I heard a knock at the door, and I thought I must be hearing things, because who would be knocking on the door at midnight? So I ignore it. <laughs> and I hear the doorbell. <laughs> and I figure I better check it out at this point. I still have no clue who it could possibly be. And when I open the door, lo and behold, it's Evan. In shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> 
and I'm not quite sure what it was he said to me, but it was something along the lines of, I think I have frostbite. <laughs> so we took him upstairs to the bathtub to run some lukewarm water on his feet, make sure he didn't need to have any toes cut off. <laughs> And as it became apparent that he was all in one piece and wasn't going to need medical attention, I started laughing about this. <laughs> Evan had been out photographing, was it a, some roses? No, 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 that night the snow had fallen. And so I snuck around so I wanted to have a picture of the manse without any footprints in it. It was like a fresh fall in the snow thing. So I had done that. And then as I was walking back, I slipped onto ice, and uh, my keys had been in my hand, and my camera, the relatively new camera, was here. So I forsook the keys and protected the camera as I fell back, and the keys went somewhere in a bush, and search as I may, I could not find them. Uh, but, force of habit, I had locked the door. Yes? Kenny's being paid to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> so Evan had gone out in this pristine snow to take some pictures of how beautiful everything was, playing with his new camera, and as he started to drop it by accident, he must have went to grab it and just thrown his keys clear off in the bushes, couldn't find them anywhere to unlock the door, so he came down to First Street to find some help. Well, we got him some warm socks and shoes so that he could go back out and look for his keys. And he needed a flashlight. It was dark out. Well, I found a mag light. And, of course, the batteries were dead. <laughs> so that was our next adventure, is we had to go to Giant. <laughs> we had to go to Giant and buy some batteries. <laughs> And when I say we had to buy some batteries, I mean I had to buy some batteries. <laughs> he had locked his wallet. <laughs> so, but I'm glad you didn't lose any, any toes, Evan. Right. And I'm glad you managed to find me while I was awake I and could hear the doorbell. <laughs> Because about five minutes later, and I would have been in bed and would have had no clue. <laughs> yep. God's providential care, folks. <laughs> I feel like you've left out one of the better parts of the story. Uh oh, I hate to think that I left something out. Remember, we didn't just look for my keys with the flashlight. At the previous meet trustee meeting, one of the trustees had said, we need to secure the back of the fellowship house. Someone could break into the house through the basement quite easily. And that's what we did. As I went to the flashlight, went down the stairs, and then up to get the extra set of keys here so I could get into my house in case I couldn't find the keys in the bushes. But we did find them. And as we looked, like, at my fingers, you could see the snowprint had just missed them. So there was also the adventure of breaking into the fellowship house. I don't remember which trustee said it was easy to break into. But <laughs> Well, I can't believe I left out the best part here, but oh, yeah. I'm glad you're here to help oh, yeah. fill us all in on the situation. Sure. I was grateful you were there. <laughs> so. Which part? We were joking around the other day as we were planning this, and I made a comment to the effect of, well, Evan's lucky I didn't have my hunting rifle, or I might have been armed when I went to the game. <laughs> I, I guess they just didn't want me to forget that part. Yeah, I am lucky. That's for sure. That's for sure. Now, you know, I remember, I don't know if it was Mary Lou or someone else said, well, I bet you'll never do that again, going out in the snow and flip-flops. What were you thinking? And I said, I did it again the very next day, actually, to prove that the previous thing was a fluke. And it wasn't foolish to go out and flip-flops in the snow, because I was only going to be out for five minutes or so. So, lesson not there. The question is why you felt you needed to lock your door if you were going outside for five minutes. <laughs> because I came from a place where you just automatically do that. I didn't even think about it. So, yeah. But now I have hidden, let's see, the things I did learn, I have hidden keys around the manse. Where, I don't know, Harvey has a copy of my key in case I ever need to call him and ask. 
So, yeah, anyway. Okay. Thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, I think we've got some more help here All to right. prevent situations like that in the future. Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. We do. <laughs> we recognize the need to equip you with some material to prevent such an event from happening again. More in with our concern for Kenny. <laughs> but uh, we present you first with this custom made keychain with a picture, which we cannot show everybody, of a snow covered manse from the road, maybe the middle of the road, with the words great photographer. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> it's a good photo, just saying. <laughs> Was it worth it? Now that everything's fine, yes. If I lost a toe, maybe not. <laughs> Next, we will address the flip-flop issue. The question is, do all Southerners go walking in the snow wearing flip-flops? If so, we present you with your winter footwear, <laughs> with, complete with toe warmers. <laughs> and just in case you plan to stay out for an extended period of time, someone on the session thought this pair of toe socks would com complement your flip-flop ensemble. <laughs> I didn't realize I had regressed to being a teenage girl. <laughs> it was the hearts of love. Ah. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Next, we want to light up your world. You were very lucky the giant was open 24 hours a day. Yep. Oh, wrong present, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have for you not only one new flashlight, but two spares put where you can find them, including batteries. Thank you. I actually need these. <laughs> and for the finishing touch of your photography in the snow, Desire, we have a light up measuring stick where you can press the button, some button, and it lights up so you can measure the depth of the snow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carolyn? Well, Mr. Evan, I think somewhere I heard that your favorite song is Be Down or Vision. Yep. So I'm going to attempt to sing this to you. Okay. Thou our vision, O oh, heaven, we pray. You are our shepherd, please show us the way. We do appreciate all that you do. We sing our heartfelt thank you to you. Oh. Kevin, we thank you for being the brunt of our roast, <laughs> but we would like to present you with one thing, and I'll let Patty do that. Let me do well, We know that about the flip-flops in the middle of winter, but yeah. we have also witnessed other times when you haven't dressed appropriately. <laughs> now, one would be the beauty the picnic, if anyone remembers how cold it was that day. So, um, we decided that this wireless forecast station uh, would be just for you. That way, it tells you if it's going to be snowy or uh -huh. sunny and um, outdoor temperature. So we thought this would be very helpful. Well, thank you. <laughs> From the book of Ephesians, we know that uh, we all have spiritual gifts. And um, I've heard that 
and beginning, you were questioning whether to go into medicine or ministry. And I just want to say on behalf of everyone here in your church family, we're very thankful that you chose ministry, and we're very blessed to have you here. Oh, thank, thank you. you. into it and for being here, uh, especially, you know, as Mike said, as I know that uh, Sunday is a day when at this time, you know, we remember what's important, and, and that's uh, Steelers football. <laughs> and, uh, we were missing that, you know, I'm sure. Not so much this year. Not this year, you're right. No, but just in general, thank you for being here. Thank you for all of the kind words and the gifts and the cards and everything. Thank you so much. I'm very, very fortunate uh, to be here. Like I said, you definitely... Uh, make this an easy, uh, easy call to have. You know, there are places where, uh, you know, I, like I have friends who are pastors that, you know, they feel like their church not only doesn't appreciate them, but actively seems to be trying to thwart them at every turn, and I've never felt that way here. You know, you folks are really, really wonderful, and it's just a privilege uh, to be called your pastor. So, thank you. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, folks.